Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today we are making a mistake and doing a ridiculous fix on it. So stay tuned. <laughs> so I spun this roving from Dye Candy, which is fantastic, um, to companion the bat from the previous video, links down below. Or actually the bat was a companion to this, but because of this mistake, this is part two. Anyway. Uh, but I spun it the wrong direction. Or maybe I spun the bat in the wrong direction, but that would be even more of a pain in the bum to fix. So it's the roving that I spun in the wrong direction. Uh, because distracted dyslexic is a wonderful thing to be uh, when plying from two... This is why I center pole ball ply. I know people hate center pole ball plying, but I, I cannot do direction. I... I uh, uh, so... Anyway, um, this is a straight up tutorial video, so I do not have a special Patreon voiceover. I do have a special Patreon music only video. So you guys on, do you hear my baby? <laughs> okay, so that's gonna be loud. Anyway, so this is not a Patreons get a voiceover situation. This is a, everybody gets a voiceover because this is just a straight up tutorial. You might one day need this ridiculous solving tutorial. So without further ado, here's how to fix a yarn that you spun in the wrong direction for plying. <sighs> so here I've left this in and like the other clip, I've left it at the regular speed um, in real life to show you exactly what speed I spin at because a lot of people are like, wow, you go so fast. Um, despite the fact that most of my clips are sped up between two and four and rarely eight times. So <laughs> here's, a, here's a good example of what it looks like and how it really is kind of a slow process. So here I am attempting to apply these two together and I'm going, okay, something doesn't feel right. Something's not going well. I'm in denial at this stage. Oh, there you go. I spun a little bit longer and you could see it was, it was a hot mess there. So if this happens to you, you have some options. You can do any of the regular ones like, you know, in ply it or spin something else or leave it a single or spin another ply and have opposing plies, which is cool. Um, but, if you really just need this yarn, you can treat it like the world's tiniest pencil roving that's also already spun. <laughs> so I discovered a few hacks along the way. And here in this first clip, you can kind of see some of my initial attempts. So first of all, I kept the plying settings on my wheel. So I was at the middle whirl and I had a fairly intense uh, tension rod setting. Now this caused me two problems in that one, the tension wanted to rip apart the fiber when it was in its untwisted state. So that was problematic, especially on these thinner parts because this is a fairly thin yarn. Two, without the fast flyer action sending twist into my yarn pretty rapidly, I wasn't able to get enough twist without essentially breaking it and accidentally drafting it even thinner than it already was. So that was, that was not good. So first I fixed my tension and then I fixed my uh, ratio setting. So there are a couple ways that I have found that I could do this. And here you can see the first one where I was trying to keep it fairly close to the orifice to get the twist in quickly. Um, and then untwisting it with my fingers and then twisting it. So actually moving the twist manually. Um, that went okay, but I found that I was accidentally drafting it smaller. It w I was having trouble getting enough twist in before it went to the bobbin and it was clunky. It just wasn't working very well. So after that, I discovered that if you hold your fingers about two to four inches apart and clamp down with your supply hand, so your back hand, then 
quickly release your front fingers. And okay, so now we're going fast. So you can see, see where I'm really hitting my groove here. So quickly release with your front fingers and let that twist into that spot. And then leave about this much room between you and the orifice. So that way you can let some passive twist fill up that yarn. So before it hits the bobbin. So it's not too twisty and it's not under twisty. Now here in a little bit, you can see I get a little cocky and I stay a far away from the bobbin. And then I got really over twisted. <laughs> so you want to keep it just a few inches from the bobbin. And right there you could see that I was having trouble figuring out why my twist was essentially disappearing. The reason why it was disappearing is because I wasn't clamping down enough on my supply hand. I also found that if you let a little twist build up in the yarn between your, I guess, drafting hand and your orifice, and then quickly release, that gives a really good, um, like quick fill up because you don't want a lot of time to pass while it's in that untwisted zone because just the natural movements of your body are going to tease those fibers backwards and then you have a smaller yarn. <laughs> I also noticed that it was pretty likely to get a little bit more fuzzy than it was initially because the fibers are pretty happy where they are. They've been sitting there, in my case, for a few days. And so when you twist them in the opposite direction, they lay a little funky. So you get a bit more of a halo than you initially had. So here you can really see it pretty well what's going on with this situation. You can see how quickly the twist travels down, how you would want a faster ratio with a medium tension. You can also see how um, twisting your fingernail, fingernails? I guess you could do that. Um, your fingers a little bit also helps navigate that middle period where it's untwisted. Um, so yeah, your goal is to uh, get the correct amount of twist into the yarn, get it out of the untwisted phase as quickly as possible, and also not take forever, um, and leave the yarn essentially the same as it was before you started as far as weight and halo. So um, <laughs> it's a bit of a tall order. It's not gonna be perfect, but it actually isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So, Overall, I think I would recommend this method. It's easier if you have a heavier weight of yarn because you have more fiber to work with. Any smaller than this, and I think it wouldn't work. There, You would just be far too likely to break the yarn. Um, in the thinner spots, it, it's really difficult to get it to do what it needs to do without breaking. Um, I've had to splice it back together a couple of times now and I'm not fully through the bobbin yet. Um, so yeah, I think, I think this is a good technique and it's not as annoying as I thought it was going to be. It's pretty meditative, just like regular spinning. Um, also, if you see the bobbin not spinning really well over there, that's because Bean took the plastic piece um, and that's why my lazy Kate isn't spinning and I'm needing to be a bit more manual with it. So if yours is not spinning the way it should and you have a spin illusion, it might be because you're missing the plastic piece. And you can totally order replacements and they're not very expensive. So here is our favorite bean, the little cameo appearance, eating some ice cream that we got to reward ourselves from uh, surviving some pretty long and boring VA med boarding appointments. <laughs> And uh, she wanted to make some faces for the camera. So there you go. Okay, so that was ridiculous. And I'm sure it felt like pulling teeth to watch. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was pretty meditative. But I still felt stupid. Like, how many directions can you spin? Only two. And I still spun it the wrong direction. You should see me driving direction-wise. Terrible. Anyway, really, like a long-term family joke. It, and also not the family. Just basically everybody knows that I suck at directions. Ugh. So, 
thank you for watching this video and thank you for waiting for the <laughs> three parts rather than two parts because of this ridiculous mistake. So I hope you benefit from it, but I hope more that you don't need to benefit from it. So my suggestion is take a little sticker and put like an arrow pointing in the way that you always spin a single and an arrow pointing in the direction that always spin apply and save yourself this problem. That's what I'm going to have to do. You won't see it until the next set of videos because I didn't do it for these, obviously. <laughs> So as per usual, super special thanks to my Patreon patrons and the people who buy books from my store, links down below, and the people who buy wheels. This wheel that I'm spinning on now is a queen bee, super handy for all things, including weird yarn respinning. I have links that down below too. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you want to stick around for more of these shenanigans, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any thoughts on this video <laughs> or um, ridiculous yarn mistakes you'd like me to uh, try on purpose to attempt in the future and solve, leave them in the comment section down below too. And I will see you next time. Bye.